hello everyone and welcome to ProLine Direct from Las Vegas, the gaming capital of the world. We're going to take a look at the NFL playoffs, two games that are going on Sunday. Plus, we're going to take a look at Monday's college football national title game. First, let's tell you what we have going on. Zach, terrific basketball run of 64, hot, 54 and 3, red hot. Thank you off a 3 and 0 sweep last night, including a Notre Dame. What do you have coming up for this week? Um, I'm actually looking at Saturday's games right now as we speak. Some good matchups lined up there. Uh, during the week through Friday, should be pretty steady with some basic plays, two to three plays a day. Um, well, yeah, college basketball is bread and butter right now. We'll get into some uh, divisional round uh, playoff games here. Hopefully we can get you some winners. I know I went one and one on the plays here last week. Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll forgive you for that. <laughs> you know. no, don't do it again. Yeah. Pittsburgh, I was rooting for them, but you know it's like March Madness when you know they have one of those tough matchups. You know if they get by it that they have a good chance of going all the way, but they just couldn't do it. Le'Veon Bell being out was too they, you much. You know what? I think that was a difference. It was I too much, was and you can't kick field goals in the playoffs, especially at home, and that came back to bite them. They kicked three field goals early. Um it was throughout the game, three field goals, 10-9, to nine, and maybe if they had one of those touchdowns, uh, they could have had the lead late in the game, and who knows, it would have changed the strategy a little bit and said Ben had to press. He had that third and short, and you've seen that play about ten times this year where he does that little spin roo getting away, flips it to the back. The back makes the catch, Le'Veon Bell, and he runs for 40 yards. Instead, Ben Tate, new to the team, bobbles it with one hand, and Terrell Suggs, he's a freak athlete. I've got a story about him in here in a minute, but freak athlete. Catches the ball with his legs, gets the pick. Can you believe that? Baltimore, <laughs> Baltimore, <laughs> Baltimore really? just puts the dagger. Great play call, and there's nothing you can do about it. I, I, it was a good game, and uh, that's the way that one went down. So Pittsburgh is out of it, and we'll see what happens in the AFC. But Terrell Suggs, just a little background on that guy, been a freak athlete oh, his whole career. Incredible. He went to ASU on a scholarship at 17 years old. I forgot what his Pac-12 record for sacks was that year, but he was in the same conference in high school as my my high school. When I was a freshman. He was a senior. I was covering one of the games. It was a downpour, and they won seven to nothing. But he played running back, and Sucks? yeah, he played running back really? in high school, and I think he ran for 250 yards that He's game. He's an athlete, and I mean. that year he ran for almost 2,000 yards. The guy's incredible, and. Yeah. Uh, he could be that spiritual uplift that uh, Ray Lewis was a few years ago. Who did, knows? Did but. you have to tackle him? No, I was covering the game, luckily. So, so did you? Wait a minute. Wait, wait. No, like he might have had three or four sacks in the 200 something You and Terrell kind of hung out? Come on. Give us some stories here. Anything out in the no. market? Come on. No, no, no. Come on. Pick it up. Come on. Don't be but they're like a factory. That. They're a factory. Yeah. I mean, you got the story. Come on. Don't just leave me in the eighth inning. Yeah. <laughs> you sound like one of my dates. All right, if you want to get Zach's plays, you can go to jimfeist.com. You see that helmet at the bottom of the screen? That is a link to the website, and you can just click on that. And Jim Feist, he had his NFL Game of the Year last month. That was on the Seattle Seahawks, 35-6 to winner. Followed that was NFL Total of the Year. That was Tennessee-Indianapolis under the total. Last week he had his Wild Card Game of the Year. That was Carolina Panthers, a 27-16 to winner. This weekend, Jim has his NFL Playoff game of the year. You can get that at the website at jimfice.com, or if you want to get it at a half price, you can call the phone number on your screen. Okay, let's get to uh, some playoff games coming up this weekend on Sunday. Got the Cowboys playing the Packers in Lambeau Field, Green Bay, six and a half to six point favorite. The total of 52 and a half. Start off with the weather here: 18 degrees, Woo! sunny, and no Woo! wind. So nice, other than the uh, freezing cold. In fact, that's going to remind people they've been talking about the 1967 Ice Bowl meeting, which is the which last. Which nobody time. remembers those talks. Oh, sure, that, I remember. They've been talking about. Well, was there I, a number on that game? Yes, it was Green Bay minus three and a half, and believe it or not, no total. At least we didn't do totals back then. That when the merger came, NFL, AFL, which that game, the Ice Bowl. But I was in Houston at the time and had a blanket around me. <laughs> because of just looking at those guys playing weather conditions like that. And you know what? The game was actually a very good game, this ice bowl thing you're talking about in 1967 for the conditions that they had to play under. Mm -hmm. And uh, a guy named Chuck Mercine, nobody remembers him, became a hero. He was running back for Green Bay, and then he walked off into oblivion, kind of like Al Gianfrido. 
Well, did you? No, wait a minute. Wait. Nobody knows Al Jean. I know Al. Forty-seven. Yes. I bet you Zach doesn't yeah. know who Al Jean nope. is. <laughs> See, Zach's going to need me. He really don't need me, Randy Gap, but he's going to need me for this whole. But yes, I do recall the game. Final twenty-one seventeen, and that's when Bart Starr scored late. And the Talking Heads are going to bore you to death with all that. But the line on that game was Green Bay minus three and a half, and a lot of people took Dallas because of the old book, and that's what got him. You know. Now, did you play in that game or just book? <laughs> Yeah, I was lucky to get out of high school without one moving my head on my shoulders. I wasn't drafted for anything. Well, these teams did meet uh, last season. The Packers won 37-36, to which you can kind of throw that out the window because, first of all, it was at Dallas. Yeah. It was a really bad Dallas defense last year that was decimated with a lot of injuries that game. Plus, the Green Bay quarterback was named Matt Flynn for the game. So uh, More we'll, like Errol Flynn, right? <laughs> so we'll take a look at the, this year's Dallas team that is uh, – off that big win against the Lions, 24 to 20, even though they got outgained 397 to 315. Dallas just 5 and 12 against the spread in January. Games didn't cover last week, despite that wing. So, Sean, we have a Dallas team that's only 5 and 4 at home. However, they're 8 and 0 straight up, 7 and 1 against the spread on the road. Conditions, though, are going to be a little different this week at Lambeau Field for them. Yeah, uh, like you said, uh, first of all, Fox is going to cover this game. It goes at 1.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It'll be, uh, I believe it, I think it's the first game. And it, no secret last week, I thought Dallas was the side. And uh, I made it my best bet here. I'm getting to be Joe Fade, by the way, on this kind of stuff. And Dallas, in my opinion, is lucky to be here. I, I think there's some shenanigans going on, especially in the second half. I mean, they were clearly outplayed by Detroit, and you've already mentioned they're going to work this stat over. The Dallas was 8-0 and 7-1 and against the spread on the road. Actually, technically, that's not correct. One of their games was in London. I can't remember who they played, Jacksonville or Tennessee, one of those teams, they blew them out. But they, they do seem to play a lot better away from Arlington down there. Uh, average stats here. Now, here's the thing. Romo, quarterback Romo, 19-31 passing for two touchdowns, no interceptions. And and they got the benefit of three turnovers, and despite the fact that Dallas actually played efficient football, they barely won the game, and I think with some help from the referees, and who knows, who knows what's going on you know, with any of that. And the thing about Dallas for me this year is they're a very difficult team to handicap. They're Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, here, national TV, Thanksgiving, at home, against the Eagles, a divisional rival, and at that time, they had to, they knew they had to play again on the road at the end of the season in Philadelphia, so you at least want to get the win at home. And they were looking very good against the point spread at that time. And Lay and Egg get blown out from the first quarter on lose by like, what, 23 points, Zach? Was it 33 to yeah, 10 was, sound right? It's so okay to say something, Zach. Pump in here. But, um, <laughs> they, they, yeah. also, and then, they also lost to the Redskins, too. Well, um, who does how that? about go to Seattle? They're up in Seattle as and an eight-and-a-half-point dog and win the game straight up Play as great. a dog, 30 to 23. So, I mean, how do, you, how do you figure that? How do you figure that? Very difficult <laughs> team to handicap. Okay. Uh, one other note. First playoff game since 2000 and what, nine, four years at least? I mean, no no secret how I feel about Jerry Jones. I think he's a bad owner. He's meddlesome. He's got nothing to do. He's bored. And he hires lousy coaches. And I'm not much for Jason Garrett. They got lucky to win this game. Now, let's talk about Green Bay. And in my opinion, this is the key to the whole thing. I'm going to defer to Zach to, to get further into it. How about Aaron Rodgers? Listen to these numbers. 36 touchdown passes, no interceptions. He's on that kind of a streak at Lambeau. That's incredible. Problem. Big one. This calf thing that's been nagging him for the last, what, six weeks? What's the, what's the temperature up there going to be? 18, 18 degrees a game, something like that? Now, if you're the Dallas defensive coordinator, what's the first thing going through your mind? And you know it. If you're going to stop this Green Bay team, you've got to stop one guy. This is like Denver. You've got to stop one guy. I mean, who's the backup? What did we say? Errol Flynn? No, wait a minute. No, it's Matt Bar Flynn. It's Bar yeah. Star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Bar's not doing too good right now. In fact, we're probably going to get bad news about him pretty soon down the road. But the fact is, the key to this game is Rodgers is not going to be mobile. They're going to have to design plays for like he has the ball for maybe three and a half, four seconds because that Dallas pass rush, they know it. They have to get after him. And by the second half, when that field is really frozen hard and he's not moving around, I think is the thing that's going to decide whether or not Green Bay can win this game. This is a tough one, in my, in my opinion. Uh, pretty good defenses on both sides of the ball. No secret Dallas rushes the ball. But how many did they get against Detroit? 73 for the whole game. They're going to have to do better than that. And Romo is going to have to play efficient football like he did. In the, he played well, I thought. I mean, he didn't have the greatest numbers in the world, but he didn't hurt his team. Didn't throw any interceptions. They only had one turnover. They got three. 
And they're going to have to do the same thing here. And the guy they got to get him from, believe it or not, is the super stud in this game, which is Aaron Rodgers. It's close. This, believe it or not, this game has overtime maybe written on it. I, I don't see either team giving up. Field goal kickers, and I think Zach is going to talk about that. It's going to be questionable in that, in that weather up there, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of wind. As I recall. No, no wind. I'm going to say possible overtime. I think Green Bay wins it. If I have to bet the game, and I may take a shot with it, if that, Zach talks me into anything, I would take the points in this game, which is the way the money's going. Lined open seven, went to six and a half, down to six, back to six and a half. Right now, generally six, total 53. I would take the dog in this game. Just I think it's going to be close, and I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to make any movements, and I think that Dallas defense will be able to hit him enough times, and hopefully at least he'll finish the game. Who knows? Zach, what do you got? Well, wait a minute. This Green Bay team has great balance on offense, uh, eighth in the NFL in passing, 11th in rushing, and they've been covering numbers at home, 37-16-1 against the spread. They're also on 11-2 straight-up run. So, Zach, how do you see the matchup here? I actually I agree with Sean on this one. I think the Cowboys are getting Whoa. a lot of points. You're in a lot of trouble, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting a lot of points in this spot. Um, there's, of course, a lot of subplots in this game, uh, as Sean mentioned there. But uh, a couple of things that we need to look at here. The running backs, two prime backs, but two backs that have fumbling issues. So be on the lookout for that. DeMarco Murray and Eddie Lacy. I don't have stats in front of me, but I know I've seen four or five fumbles from each of them this year. Probably top five in the league with fumbles. So who's the one that's going to make the mistake there? Uh, secondly, Aaron Rodgers. There's a lot of pressure on this Green Bay team. Let's go back to last year. They got uh, destroyed in the playoffs. They lost to Colin Kaepernick a couple of years ago. By the read option, they lost uh, against the Giants a couple of years before that. So their playoff success really hasn't been that great since their uh, Super Bowl run. Um, defensively, I think last week Detroit Lions had the masking defense to to go after Tony Romo to limit Des Bryant, which they did for mo most of that game. But I don't think Green Bay has that style of defense to do that. So Tony Romo and this Cowboys team, I think they're going to get out early in this game. You know, go back to go back to your sports careers, whatever that ended in high school, <laughs> junior high, whatever it may be. But go back to the days when you were in a game that you thought you were going to lose, and then you actually won. The next time your team goes out, we didn't I win a lot. Uh, to, 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 I wasn't drafted. Sack. They threw me in the army, in fact. Oh man! But the next time you go out on the field with your team after a win like that, you're much looser because you know you're not supposed to be there. And that's the way Dallas is probably going to play this game. I think they're going to play a lot looser on defense, especially offense, and maybe their offense will look a little bit better. But Green Bay, we're well, getting a lot of points here. I'm not sure that the Lambo edge in the playoffs has been much of a factor lately, um, but it's going to be a big. It's going to be a good game. I think we're going to see a lot better games this week than we did last week in the wild card round, uh, and I'm going to side with Dallas with the points here. Um, and I do, I do. For some reason, I got a gut feeling Eddie Lacy is going to have some fumbling issues. We'll see if that's the case, but I, I'm going to side with Dallas. Well, I'm going to take a look at the total. I think there's going to be... Uh, you always take a look at the total. Yeah, I'll take a closer look at it. <laughs> a closer look. Here's a Dallas team that's 5-3 and three over the total. I do have a lot of concerns with their secondary. It wasn't exploited last week, but they've been bad much of the season. 26th against the pass, and boy, they're going up against one outstanding quarterback, best one in the NFL, and it's an attacking Green Bay, uh, Green Bay up-tempo offense that would concern me. And uh, this, when these teams meet, it's 6-2 and two over the total, including that game last year. Plus, the Green Bay has the balance on offense, which Detroit didn't have last week. Aaron Rodgers, 38 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. And the fact that it's going to be cold, 18 degrees, but sunny and no wind points to uh, an offensive game as both teams have so many offensive weapons.